Hey, this is Adam with Sumitomo Drive Technologies, and today we're going to go over one of the most common questions we get on the phone and in emails, brake issues. So whether the brake's slipping, brake's dragging, something's going on. So we have a video today to show you to how to do some troubleshooting with our brakes. Always remember when working with equipment like this, you always want to wear your proper PPE, whether it's safe steel toe boots, safety glasses, gloves, and depending on your location, your electrical lockout tag out procedures. First, we're going to show you how to check the rectifier of one of our brake motors. All you need to use here is a multimeter. First, you want to set the multimeter to the diode setting, and with that, you'll be able to make sure the rectifier is functioning properly. To check the rectifier, you want to check current between terminals 1 and 4 and 2 and 4. The value shown here might not match what you're getting, but as long as you're getting a value between both sets of terminals, your rectifier is good. If the number reads 0, that means the rectifier is bad and it will need to be replaced. Next, we'll go through the process for checking the brake gap on our brake motors. First, you want to remove the manual release handle. That just pops off after removing two C-clips. Once that's removed, use a pair of pliers to remove the brake release pins. They'll just pull out. They're held in by rubber, so they might fight you a little, but they will come out. Next, you want to remove the three bolts that hold the fan cover on. They're sometimes hard to get at, but there are three around the circumference of the motor. Once the bolts are removed, the fan cover can be lifted right off. Next, we can remove the fan. You want to unscrew the set screw holding the fan in. There's just one set screw and loosen it just enough so you don't lose the set screw out of the fan. Once it's loose, the fan will pull vertically up and off the shaft. Remove the gasket underneath the fan. Next you have to take off the rear cover. Take the three retaining bolts off and then there will be two side brackets that will need to be loosened and rotated out of the way. Once they're rotated down out of the way, you can lift up and remove both the rubber gasket as well as the rear cover. The rubber seal is to keep water from getting inside the brake. Next you want to check the gap. Now you want to check the gap in multiple locations, usually three, around the circumference of the brake. You want to check it between the lower plate and the top of the coil. Not the gap between the upper and lower plate, but the gap between the lower plate and the coil as shown here. Not here, here. The gap specification will be in the user manual for each product. Once you've determined if the gap is in spec or not, is where you make your next step. If the gap is in spec and there's still some issues, contact your local Sumitomo representative and we can walk you through any troubleshooting process. From here, we'll just show you how to adjust the brake if the gap is out of spec. First, you remove all three retaining bolts that'll remove the top cover. These will be under some tension because there are three springs holding this in, so be careful as they come up. And be careful as you're removing the top plate, as you can see here, some of those spacers like to jump all over the place. Now once you determine what spacers and what shims you have, you can make your adjustments as necessary. This may take a few times to get the correct gap, but the process is the same for each time. The key thing to remember here is to make sure you have the same thickness spacer at each three points. That way the two plates are completely parallel with each other around the entire brake. This will ensure proper braking and proper brake life. At this point, it would be good to check the brake disc as well for any abnormal wear or thickness. There is a thickness spec as well in the O&M manual for the your size brake motor. So check that too while you're in here. Once everything's checked and you have all your shims in place, go ahead and reinstall the top plate, making sure your shims do not fall out and they're evenly spaced in between for each bolt. For these, there's lock washers, so you just want to tighten these down until the lock washer is flat. And then recheck your gap all the way around to ensure proper setting. Checking it in multiple locations ensures that nothing is warped and everything is flat around the entire unit. 
The gap is dependent on the size of the brake. That can also be referenced in the manual for each brake size. From here, reassembly is the reverse of disassembly. For applications where the brake is used more often, metering, high cycling, things of that nature, you'll want to check the brake gap a little bit more frequently, but it all depends on your application. It should always be part of a PM process to inspect brake gaps and make sure they're at proper specification. If you're having any other issues with your brake motors, you can always contact our product support group and they can help walk you through any issues and do any inspections as needed.